From One of One Production Studios, broadcasting from NYC, you are listening to Unexpected Success with your host, Joy. Part two of um, our discussion with Matthew Haley. Hey, Matthew. What's up? What's up? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm chilling. Um, yeah, so listen, it's been so long since I last saw you, right? It's um, been ages. Yeah. Um, so the last time we spoke, you were you had just kind of paused around the time when you said that you had um, posted some pieces for Oprah Winfrey's um, old magazine. Uh, and I guess I continued to take us through that uh, that journey. Yeah. So at that point, you know, it was within sort of the first year of me having having opened the business. And, uh, uh, you know, I had a few magazines coming. Oprah was one of the first and they gave you gave me the standard. Oh, you know, we'll print your name on the page and you'll get a lot of publicity and yada, yada, yada. But in reality, they always end up running out of space and forget to put your name. And even if they do, people that can buy a eight dollar magazine on the newsstand aren't exactly going out and getting a sofa upholstered for two thousand dollars it's a huge disconnect yeah people love to look at magazines and and fantasize about their what they would do with their apartments if they had the money to do what all these people are doing that they're seeing in the pictures but in reality it's not the case right and and also most of those you know when i worked for domino most I would say 99% of their shoots uh, are all propped anyway. They walk into the apartment, they clear the apartment, and they get different companies to Wow, it's a whole stage. Yeah, it's the whole thing staged. Right, okay. You know, I did shoots with with many magazines where we would make half, we, we would do window treatments, and we would do half of the window. They would shoot it, and then we'd move the drapery to the other side of the window, and they'd shoot that side, and then they'd, piece it together in the in the shot so that they didn't have to pay to have two sets of draperies get fabric for two sides of the window you unbelievable know, so, yeah I mean, but know, that's the game i mean that's the game that's the game it's a game it's in the, no in different the, than social media now where everyone kind of like making things appear you know yeah i mean i did the 14 episodes on hgtv the 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 show was called run my makeover I told you the stories behind that. <laughs> I can it's only just, imagine. It's all a facade. Would you go back to TV? No, I'm not. I'm not cut out for it. I'm a very sort of. I consider myself to be a blue collar person, and I can't really handle the sort of. Oh, you're going to be the next star. Oh, you're brilliant. Oh, you're this. Right. When when you're, you know, you finish. So you have to do these sort of segments, um, which I can't remember the name of them right now. In between the shots, so you know they interview you. And you say, yeah, we're putting together the floor and it's very difficult, but I think it's going to look fantastic. You know, right. Whatever. You're not an actor. You're not yeah, doing all exactly. that. Right, right, right. And, um, and you know, you sh- you, they put the camera in front of you and you do like 15 times, 15 takes. And then they, they stop and they go, you're, gonna, you're the best. This is so great. And I'm like, really? If I'm the best, I should have done it one time and be done. Right. Why are we doing 15 <laughs> takes if I'm the best and I'm right, the best right, star right. and I'm going to be a superstar? Well, I mean, that's so, the thing. So, so I, you know, for, for those of you who are listening, Matthew is a good looking guy. Right. And I'm sure you look really, you know, your you're, you're TV. You, you, you know, you, if you wanted to be that guy, you could be that guy. But you literally have paint all over your hands right now. And your wrist and like, like, <laughs> like, like he's not, you know, you're not faking, right? Like you actually do this, um, yeah. but you just weren't cut out for. Yeah, I, for I, that. I, the the I think the 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 one thing that happened on the show that made me decide that this was not for me. Although I had thought about it before, I'll tell you two stories. The first one is they they I signed the contract and we have to shoot down in Knoxville, Tennessee because that's where Scripps is and that's where they can get a tax break and so on right. and so forth. So I fly down there <laughs> and we're doing two episodes a week. So I fly down for the week and the first three days we, we shoot one episode then the next, then we have a day off, I think it was, and then we next three and then we fly back home and then have a week off and then go back. So I'm down there the first week and I'm like, look at me, I fly down. Yeah, I got, hey. You know, they're, I'm, they're paying for it. They gave me a bag and everything. I'm, this is awesome. So the first day they tell you, okay, the same cl- the clothes that you have on today, you have to wear for three days. <gasps> now I'm doing construction. So oh at the God. end of day one, the, the, my clothes are filthy. Right. 
So I'm like, I mean, like to the point where like, you know, I'm sweating in them. And yeah, of course. So, so I get back to the hotel room. Anybody that stayed in the hotel knows that if you give the laundry to the people for them to wash it, it's not coming back the next morning. Right. Away, right. right? So what am I doing at 10 o'clock at night? Washing your own clothes. Washing my clothes in the sink. And I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> like you have blue collar, but wait a minute. Yeah. This is I'm like, a, wait a second. This is what? Not posh. I thought I, I thought I was. <laughs> I thought I made it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who's going to wash my stuff? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm like, all right, there I am in the in the tub washing my clothes. I'm like, no, 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 no this is not. It, so yeah. that was the first. But then the, the most important one was when we, we. So basically, how it was set up was they have a crew that works around the clock doing these renovations, and then they have the hosts, which was myself and another girl who step in and so they'll so the guy will lay the floor down and they'll leave a little tiny section for you and you'll go over and they'll film you doing that little section and make right. it seem like you're doing the whole thing but right. you're not it's impossible for you to do the whole thing right so i'm i spent a lot of time with the other host in the in the green room which is basically just another room that's not green there's no yeah. m&ms there's nothing <laughs> it's just us and you couldn't staring you couldn't at each send, other send through your um your list of things that you needed like exactly. requirements and then no none of that none of that there's no writer <laughs> okay <laughs> you should have hired me i would have been your lawyer i would have yeah. given you a nice writer <laughs> yeah so i um so i, I I decide I can't. I just can't sit around. So I go to the carpent, the guy, the guys that are working, and I'm like, "Can I help you?" And the guy doing the work, like, he doesn't know my background. He doesn't know that I have a huge studio in New York and that right. I've got table saws and chop that saws an and that I'm building stuff. Right. Yeah. And he goes, "No, no, no, I'm good." And the producer's there, and here's the conversation. And he turns to me and he goes, "Listen, go and do what you were paid to do and be a pretty face. Stay in the green room." <gasps> No, that's so I couldn't say, say you, I like, couldn't even say I couldn't say anything you know right. I was like oh, okay I, just, I didn't say anything I just turned around and went away I was like this is not for me this is just not yeah, my no, not, not my thing not my thing at all but anyways we we get off track yeah no no but I'm happy we got it up it's good yeah <clears throat> we uh so back to the furniture joint so a year in I'm doing all these things uh, a couple years roll by you know um I have uh, um it's a magazine. Domino uh, puts me on as a, a um, one of their they, um, editors. So okay. I'm, I'm getting an income from them. Business is good. You know, I can't complain. And, and so, you know, we're talking about business and starting business. Um, I think that it really boils down to being fearless. And I know that's a corny word. No, I say it all the time. I'm, I'm kind of corny, but still. Yeah, yeah. it's like... It's it's about being fearless. It's right. about taking a risk and and trying something that could possibly go bad. I, it, the business may not have worked out. It just right. so happened that it did for me because I happened to not be the type of person that you assume when you think of upholstery. You think of some sort of you know older gentleman that's right. that's you know second English is his second language and Absolutely. he's like you know sitting there with a little chisel chiseling bits of wood and <laughs> that's literally and, my experience with having a higher an impulsor yeah and so yeah. I'm not I'm not that person so it was it's was very productive for me but that doesn't mean that it's going to be that way for everybody and so when you know we're talking about starting businesses and and I think that to start you need to start something that has the least least amount of risk for yourself with the anticipation that it may not work out, but go into it with a positive attitude right. that you want it to work out. One of the biggest things for me was, um, you know, I've now started a different business, but when I started this that business, the, you know, there was a time where I was paying eleven thousand dollars a month in rent. Sheesh! And you had a substantial staff. Yeah, and so, so your overhead must have been. I mean, what was, was your crazy. overhead? crazy. I, mean, I, I had to make like sixty, sixty-five thousand dollars a month to break even. That's crazy. Before I could make any money to pay my home bills, and um, I mean, but you had like a lot of clientele, and then you do you, you did more than just upholstery, right? I remember you actually did a door, <clears throat> um, a, a high gloss do- door with gold. Um, 
I guess decorative uh, nails. Decorative yeah. nails. Yeah, I mean we did we did everything. We did soft goods and hard goods and I had a full wood shop, so we did mill work as well. So we would do everything from building dining room tables to T V entertainment centers to Roman shades. Crazy. motorized shades my, the, that door you built is in my one of my good girlfriends her apartment uh-huh. so every time i see it, i'm like that's a that's a beauty i mean it's gorgeous it's a yeah. gorgeous door yeah yeah we did we did some but you know it's interesting because when the when the recession hit uh things changed and and that industry has become very much for the wealthy only you know it's not um it's you know it's difficult to yeah. we're a disposable society you know? I think it's interesting that you say that. I think that, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, people who live in housing projects, people, I mean, from every, who want good houses, right? Yeah. Now, granted, the price points might be different, but would, would you ever, say, start like a school or a class for people who want to work with their hands, but just have, like, you know, you have the advantage, say, right, because you grew up on a farm and you were doing this with your dad, right? And so you, yeah. you learn that skill set. But would you ever open up your doors to potentially helping people from an urban? Because like I have an urban background, right? I don't know how to do any of this, and now I know how to make a poof because you taught me. Right? Right. But I'm just saying, I'm just wondering if you would be open to teaching. So, so I think I did the class thing already, oh, and I did on, that for dude. like 15 know, years. I'm but, done with it. But, uh, but, <laughs> but and and then and then if you're talking, uh, it sounds like you're talking nonprofit. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we're talking about? Nonprofit here? No, no, you can. I don't know, but you know what I mean. I just feel like you know you have a skill set that you can pass on. Yeah, but again, it's a it's a it's a disposable society that we're living in. It's so difficult to find people that. There's a lot of people that want to work with their hands as a hobby. There's right. not too many people that want to work as with their hands as a job to make income. Right. The people that do get into this are people that come from countries where they had the opportunity to work with their hands. That makes sense. You know, when people grow up in in apartments, 350 square feet apartments, how are they working with it? Where do they get the experience to work with their hands? And, And our parents of today, like myself included i'm not running around getting my kids to hammer this and do no, that and right. so on so where are they yeah. going to learn that so true we, we we just keep showering them with garbage they don't need you know i, I think my, my my son's 11 i think i've maybe had him work with me a total of 10 hours is he interested not unless it's fortnight <laughs> <laughs> You don't know Fortnite? Yeah, no. <laughs> oh my God, you must have girls. <laughs> I do have girls, yeah. <laughs> They're too young. It's a video game that all the kids are playing now. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That and football. Forget That's it. about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you would have to, if you, if you said, I mean, you know, you've told us what you're not built for, but if you had to like kind of define your natural abilities, what would you say they are? Like if, like, you know, born with, what were you born with? My hands. Your hands? Um, yeah, I can... I'm one of these people that I don't read directions. I just look at it and I'm like, okay, I can see how this goes together. I'm very wow. good. I'm just natural. I mean, it's just something that's natural for me to be able to build stuff and figure it out very easily. I mean, that's amazing. But again, it goes right back to the very first podcast we did where I said that not everybody is cut out for it, it's not about whether you try hard, the hardest to become right. something some people just have it some people are just bo jackson some people are michael right. jordan did you how see that many 30 other, 30? did you see that yeah. one the bo jackson one? it was so yeah. good how many michael jordans have we had since michael jordan right none there's some Do people like that LeBron? just have it are you a lebron fan hmm. it, he's been i mean he's been pretty amazing the, yeah, the, there's, the, there's the, been the a, there's there's been some amazing ones, but once you've seen Michael Jordan, right? How can you? Yeah. it's hard. It's like, it's like an old. Uh, there's a sport that I love a lot, and you don't know much about, but uh, I'll bring it up now. Is tennis? <laughs> there is uh, <laughs> a gentleman called Roger Federer. Once you've seen him, dude, it's really? very hard. 
You know, I do have a tennis podcast, uh, 40 Love (laughs) Plug, um, that we have to have you on because we clearly have very different views between. uh, So listen, I can appreciate Roger Federer. And and honestly, I appreciate him more now in the past, like say two years than I did previously because I'm a a newbie to the scene. No, I'm a huge Rafa fan. I'm a huge (laughs) Nadal fan because I because because Nadal's going to leave it all on the on the court. He's gonna give you all. He's gonna chase down every single ball. He has passion. He's okay, like, let me stump you right he there. Is the every single player in the top ten is like that. No, they're just not all sweaty and greasy all over the place. Right. Okay, what? Well, yeah, see, right. see, you're 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 Roger doing this. Federer this is about is heart for you. This is about you, your height. <laughs> Heart pump, pumping when you see Rafa Nadal. Oh, this is don't not make about this a girl thing. This oh, is here not we go. about because Federer is working just as hard. He's running for every ball. He is now because he's thirty six. Because he's thirty six. They all are. They they all have. They all play that way. All right, way. listen. So this is the this is the wrong podcast for this. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we will revisit this conversation on Forty Love. Um, all right. So so I'm sorry. So um, your natural ability is your hands yes. and. Um, what advice would you give to someone who it wants to start a business is just scared, you know, and, but they, you know, they have a great idea, um, but they're just, I don't know, kind of sitting on it. What would you tell them? There is fear involved. <laughs> okay. That's you fair. have to overcome your fear because there's, there's, there's a risk in everything you do. Right. You know? If you, if you let your fear overcome you you'll never do it i'm scared of skydiving i will never skydive because i cannot get over that fear right. i'm scared of heights me too and it is what it is but i'm okay with that right you know if you're okay with not if you have a great idea and you're okay with not exploring it and just telling people you had a great idea then don't do it but my suggestion would be if you can overcome that fear put things in place that will allow you to try it right which means you know maybe pay your bills for the next year or put that money aside first so that you can give it a good try and see what happens and be prepared that at the at the end it may not work out and, right and but at least you tried it at least you can say I, I gave it a go you know but be sure that it's your passion and be sure that that is what you are good at be honest with yourself that's the, I think that's the key too, right? Like wanting to do things because you tr- it is passionate to you as opposed to doing things because you think others might like it. I think yeah. that that's what, you know, right? With even with social media, right? People are posting pictures because they're trying to get likes as opposed to posting a picture because they actually want to post it. It's like, yeah. you know what I mean? I think that that's, people get that confused. Um, so that was a jewel. I hope you guys listened to that. <laughs> Matthew just dropped a jewel. Um, so anyways, I mean, we could probably go on and on. I, I want you to come on 40 Love because I think that'll be a very passionate argument about <laughs> Rafa versus uh, Federer. Um, but until then, uh, thanks so much for coming on. And uh, we, I mean, I feel like we have more to talk about, but <laughs> we'll just stop now. Um, it was awesome. Uh, thanks for having yeah. me. And you have, a great, you have a great voice, Matthew Haley. You should do, you know, think about doing maybe your own podcast. This podcast was brought to you by 23DB Productions, ID Productions, and One of One Productions. For more information, go to Facebook and Instagram, Unexpected Success with Joy.